Most people in life are looking at how do I make a life worth living and return with having. When a man is busy doing his work, he is not paying attention to the people around him is somewhat true and somewhat untrue. Today, I was standing in a parking lot across from Target and I saw a very tall and lanky woman who looked a lot like my girl. But I was in the middle of talking to a gentleman and his wife who had visited me once before and been generous and kind. He came up to support my ministry for a second time and obviously in that moment of business I had to be kind. I had to be focused on them and I also had to be focused on the fact that people like to distract and take which means if they pull forward enough they can get me away from my pack. It is somewhat immoral how people do that. I realize they're trying to be conscientious to space with strangers but at the same time if we've known each other and your heart is in the right place then I'm okay with you approaching again. But if you act like I'm just some pulper, then it's not going to go well because God is not pleased. I am only allowed to receive from my ministry when I'm literally hearing the Lord speak saying, you may receive it. I even received from someone that I couldn't believe it today because it was a young brother, a young stud, if you will, a young white boy in a fancy purple sports vehicle. He and his buddy was almost like they were on a double date were in the front seats and I think there were girls possibly in the back seat but I wasn't really paying attention to them. He drove up nearby, he passed me a little bit of money for my ministry but I knew he had come by a few times to read my signs and I'm okay with that. I prefer an educated shopper over a foolish person any day of the week and the Lord said please receive it. You see what God has proven to me is whatever I need to spend for my life he will replace when I'm in line with his life. And I have openly said to him many times, use me in the way you will, Lord, but I want those who've abused me to go to jail and I want them to feel your will ever still. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth about what we see, what we observe, and what we feel. What I feel is an unending, unyielding, burning rage. And I can give you examples of what it's like for a homeless person any day. The difference between a homeless person, someone who's truly homeless, and a panhandler is very minute and yet it is very specific. A person who is homeless is usually carrying with them some sort of a mat on which to sleep on, typically, unless they're like me and can tolerate the concrete. But at the same time, they're going to have a blanket or two because nights are drawing colder. The rain is still crisp and the air is moist. That can cause people discomfort in their bones and in their spaces of their lungs. It is why most people try to tent themselves in some way. There is no shelter for men today, according to several women who have played by, to communicate that and articulate that. But the overwhelming change in target demographics that are now shopping in a dollar store is rather interesting because what it could mean is that our wonderfully protected nurses who are carrying COVID with them are not being paid quite as much or they're not getting as many hours and such. What I can tell you about the situation today with the beautiful lanky girl who I could only see at a distance walking my way is that if she was my girl, then she would have come over to me and taken my hand and said, hey hon, I'm here. And I would have introduced her to the lovely couple who has visited me twice and actually a third time that day and that when they went off to do the rest of their errands, they played back and gave me a few gallons of water so that I could possibly probably take a bath. But the reality is they also played me with some bread because they probably knew I would go off and make some grilled cheese at some point for my dinner. You see, in life we have people who truly listen and really understand a person's condition and the gentleman in the vehicle I think sort of takes a liking to me and he suggested he might see me again in a, another month or so because they come out from their country home only in that amount of period of time. Which means when they do their runs, they probably do staple runs. And the staples, of course, are the things they need in their home. They might also be avid online shoppers where they get their groceries delivered to the house, which is marvelous. But it does impact the quality of employees and it does impact the quality of business that we have in our local retail shops. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth about what we observe from a journalistic point of view. 
my perspective, a company's perspective perhaps, and what God might view from above. The life of a retail employee is not always short-lived, but it can be. In the last two to three weeks, I've seen plenty of faces going in and out of shops as relatively new employees and being lost or moved or replaced, or God forbid, lost in a different way by the stalkers of a hood. Now, as I say these things, as I speak the truth of what I see, I can tell the affluent and suburban-oriented community that it is very different life from going from living without struggle and without strife to living with a daily attack by the panhandlers who feel they are King Tut or King of the Hill on their street. You see, they feel threatened by people like me who has nothing to do with whether or not they are receiving gifting from people in a community. You see, everyone has a different cup or a different sign, and everyone has the right to decide who they will support, how they will support them, and whether they will support them short-term or long-term. Even today, my sweet friend who visited me yesterday with their girlfriends came zipping by with one of her guy friends to give me a couple dollars cash to ensure that I could eat, and I thought that was rather sweet of a teenage child. It shows the heart of someone who is destined to be some sort of a healer in the community. My prayer is that she's starting to think about her life the way we talked about and how important it is to create little mini projects that allow a resume to be more stout than her local competition will be kids that will be graduating high school at the same time as her and providing themselves an opportunity to move off to college. I did talk with the three girls about how important their grades are in terms of having the pick of colleges anywhere in the world. And for scholarships, it's important. We talked about other things, but none of that is your business. You see, a reading is a private thing, which I'll be talking about shortly. But what I did value today was how generous and kind the couple were, that they stayed to talk to me a while, that they offered to go off and buy me some dinner, and I said, no, I wasn't hungry yet, and I'd eventually get back to my favorite little vending shop, not my favorite group of employees, but my favorite little vending shop, and purchase the quality name brands that I'm accustomed to eating that keep me somewhat stout, somewhat in shape, and somewhat a little rotund at best. But the reality is what's amazing to me is the number of people that will try to harm and harass and steal from a homeless person in a community today.